Welcome into the Beat Sessions, your place for all things music. I'm your host, Mitchell Weary. Let's kick things off for the week of August 23rd with the lovely Lainey Wilson and this new record, Whirlwind. This is her fifth studio album and her follow-up to 2022's Bell Bottom Country, which came hot off the heels of 2021's Saying What I'm Thinking. The last four years have been very good to Lainey Wilson, and deservedly so. She's phenomenal, so talented. And if you read about her, she really, I mean, since her childhood, she's been writing music. But the last decade or so, just nonstop. The work ethic that's there, like any artist, any of us having to overcome the hurdle of COVID. But as you can tell, you know, with the release of 2021's Saying What I'm Thinking, I mean, it's just been nonstop for her ever since. 2023's Country Entertainer of the Year. There's two big things about her that I just can't get enough of. Her voice is one of the best in country music. I think just the way that she sounds is remarkable. I love listening to her on record, but it's the the melodies that she's creating, the hooks and her songwriting that are super fun and make her music very engaging for me. Country music, man, she says it, country's cool again. It's the second track on the record. We've been talking about it a bunch on the channel. I'm thrilled, I'm thrilled about her following up, uh, you know, a great appearance on Post Malone's new record that's phenomenal. Um, so yeah, you know, that singing voice of hers and, you know, I, I brought up Post Malone cause the second point is her style of country and it's, you know, obviously the foundation is there, but the Southern rock that's at work and she's someone elements of funk and soul that are at play all the time. She writes really groovy, catchy tunes, the hooks, the melodies, you know, there's all these fun pop elements that she combines so well into her sound that make it her own signature style. It's, you know, really at this day and age, this state of the game, there's, you know, so many artists out there. There's so many ways to, you know, disseminate your music, get all that stuff out there to the world. You know, it's, it's really a challenge to stand out. Oftentimes, you know, talented people do get overlooked and that is unfortunate. Sometimes, you know, there are some people that maybe should have been overlooked that make it into the limelight. That's another different story. But I think Lainey's one of those people that, you know, given her work ethic and given her style and what she's able to do, she just, she has that it factor. It's those, those tiny little things that when you talk about building uh, a three and a half minute composition, uh, she brings a lot to the table. I would give a lot of credit to her backing band, as would she. She talks about those early days, sticking it out with the same players. The type of people I want to eat dirt with is what she says. I mean, and that, it's just like, she's just, she's just such a babe to me. Like, I would love to sit down and have a Coors Light with her. That's like, she's the type of person that, you know, she would pull right on up and yes, pop me a cold one. I love that about her. Just uh, grounded, honest, that rugged working class style of human being that gives credit where credit is due. And so that backing band of hers just sounds so tight. And I wish, I wish I'd had a chance to go up to see her at Country Thunder when she was down here. I don't know how much of this she played. I hope she played a ton of it for all of you if, uh, if any of you had a chance to go. But that's where I would have been thrilled as far as most of these compositions you know, the way certain instrumentation comes in, the timing of when that happens, that's, it's so special. It's, it's something that, you know, you're working with so many familiar elements, but there's things that are constantly catching you off guard, whether it's the shift in a uh, song structure, you know, a, a certain mood that's captured at the beginning of a track that all of a sudden shifts in the coda. And we're talking about Sturgill Simpson. And I mean, he's a, a master of that. He's definitely a guy that a lot of people give him that country label, but his music much like Laney's. I, I might even say that they're very much kind of like counterparts to each other. Um, you know, their music goes so much deeper than country, but it's cool because country obviously rooted out of pop music and, you know, driven off of a lot of, uh, a lot of these other genres that they're, that they're incorporating. It's a, a solid record that I, I would say my only my only hang up with the album is that it is a little too long with the runtime, 40 bucks, double LP. Keep Up With Jones is a decent song to open things up. It's actually a pretty good song, 
But I would say that you could get rid of that track, the final track, Whiskey Colored Crayon, which I think a lot of people will not like that. And that's okay. Please feel free to disagree with me in the comments. Uh, fire away. But I, I only, it's not that I think they're bad songs, but I think that with a 12 track run, you could have done a great single LP. The listening experience would have been more cohesive, I'd argue. But you have vinyl packages now that, you know, if you want to throw in extra tracks, and I believe she's done that with, you know, all the records that she's put out. Uh, there's been, you know, the inclusion of uh, additional tracks with the uh, with the streaming uh, mix. So I, I, I would encourage her to do that. That's the only thing. I think this is a fun record. I'm going to give it a, a 7.3 out of 10 score before we get into the tracks. But it's it's situations like this where... I, I, it's a big focus of the channel. And I think it's an important thing to talk about. Not all of us have a lot of money. And when we're using that discretionary income and some of us pinching pennies, I know I am right now trying to get to a point where I can refi my house and money's tight. And so there's, there's projects like this that could easily be, you know, just like a single solid 46 minutes, one record. I think it would make for a better listening experience over on the wax. But if you stream this thing, it's phenomenal. It's definitely worth your time. Uh, as I said, 7.3 out of 10, no on the wax, but we'll get into the track list. Keep up with the Jones or keep up with Jones, excuse me, is your first song. Loose guitars uh, around, uh, uh, they like ride to open up the track. It quickly finds this acoustic drive and uh, has a nice groove that it says, settles into. Stays minimal. Something about this record, I would say, throughout its entirety that I enjoyed. Laney's voice, again, remarkable. And the fact that a lot of the, the music, it, it reminds me of Johnny Cash. When I returned to the channel, got to lead off with his new record. And there's definitely that element of the music just being complimentary and letting what she's bringing to the table with that instrument of hers uh, really shine and be at the forefront of things. Um, this track, it's got this cool drum-driven breakdown, though. I like the way that it fills out in the chorus and elements of surf rock that make it kind of interesting. A good track, but I think that if if we just kicked off with Country's Cool again, you know, just given where we're at this day and age, there was a, there was a time when, and I still know people, country music has such a silly stigma. We've talked a lot about country. I think I've mentioned it in just about every review where we've gone there. Country's, country's hip. It's catchy. It's fun. And, uh, and I grew up in a place that, uh, you know, country music is king. So I am biased in a certain regard, certain regard there, but there's, there's just no denying that it just, at the end of the day on like a Friday or Saturday night, you're out with some friends chilling at the bar. There's, there's no denying the, the good feel that a solid country music song can bring to the table, to the dance floor, to all the things. Country's cool. Again, your second track acoustic riff with a really, uh, just nice, uh, cool electric element, pedal steel element that rolls out, uh, the simple honky tonk jam and, uh, just, uh, a really just a dope track that I think would have made a better album opener, but it's uh, a solid track. Nonetheless, good horses featuring M Miranda Lambert. Uh, love the, uh, the combination of voices there. Arpeggiate acoustic riff. You get this like dark brooding uh, sense in the song. And I love the, the minimalism here with her voice. And then the chorus takes a very interesting turn. The instrumentation, the melodies become lighter. Um, you know, I like, I love the, the drum, the way that it, it, uh, it comes in. And uh, just great thump in the bass. The banjo element's nice on the track. It is a lovely song. Broken Hearts, Still Beat is your fourth track. Vocal, simple piano to open. Light textures that are going to sit there in the background. Uh, and her voice sounds great on this particular track to me. Piano becomes more complex as the song builds. Simple instrumentation. Uh, and just a really nice ballad. It's uh, uh, the, the melodies that are creating here are, um, are nice. And then, you know, towards the end, it takes a very interesting driving turn. Talking about these compositions, keeping you on your toes. And they do. Your title track, Whirlwind, is your fifth song since the open. And, and I feel like there's a, a little stretch here in the album where you're getting more of the, the other elements that she's incorporating into her sound uh, other than country. You're getting more of that Southern rock. You're getting you know, just interesting electronic elements, synth elements that, I mean, dare I say, like they're almost new wavy. There's, you know, hints of kind of like indie rock there, but it's cool. It works. She incorporates all of them, you know, seamlessly in my opinion. 
Um, the uh, the driving acoustic guitar that enters with those uh, you know light synths uh, has got this muted effect. It's cool. Uh, it fills out with the hook, and then all of a sudden you start getting things like banjo and this alternative feel. Um, I like the you know the tone in the guitar reminding me a lot of desert rock. Just a, a gorgeous arrangement there. Call Cowboy, your sixth song, mellow acoustic, uh, pedal steel, and, uh, and just great tone in both of those instruments on this song. Chorus fills out gently. Um, it's got this uh, ambient breakdown with uh, with synths that are uh, that are driving that. That's interesting. And another coda that just takes this big turn and rocks out. Love the flair in that. Hang tight, honey is your seventh song. Drums, vocal harmony take off. The rest of it just hits for a banger. I mean, this song. Is, is just so damn good from start to finish. Great hook and energy, uh, and uh, and I really like the way that it transitions right into Bar in Baton Rouge. Girl from Louisiana, it's an appropriate title for a song for me. Like uh, the way that this is just going to ride light textures. It's uh, got this arpeggiated acoustic riff that comes in, vocal enters, and the song builds You know, after that. Chorus rocks out, and another great coda with another uh, just a, another lovely jam. That's a lot of fun. Counting Chickens is your ninth song. Playful acoustic riff and vocal. Definitely a um, just kind of like a, a, a cute, um, it just a, kind of a, a, a love song, so to speak. It's got a, a nice sentiment to it is what I was looking there for. Uh, playful acoustic riff. Vocal has a catchy little bounce to it as well, so it does have that element to it. Chorus finds a little rhythm, uh, but it does stay minimal. Uh, second verse does build into instrumentation, though, and uh, another catchy number, Four by Four by You, your 10th song. This is my favorite song. Synths and soulful organ to open, acoustic riff and vocal. It's uh, just so catchy. The chorus hits at, uh, at a nice min-tempo groove. This song with the chorus, it reminded me of Pam Tillis, Maybe It Was Memphis. Like Not necessarily because of the melody, but there was just something about um, the way that her voice carries in this song. Uh, the way that it just rides the lyrics that it took me there. And that's a great song too. I went and listened to that. It had been a minute since I heard that track. Ring Finger is your 11th song. Rock and opener. Um, ushers in this muted acoustic riff. Takes a quick turn. Minimal funky electronics. Chorus fills out uh, with country flair. Um, super funky too. Get that honky tonk feel. It's really nice. Middle of it is your 12th track. Light arpeggiated riff. Vocal is gorgeous on this particular song. I absolutely love it. Uh, it borders on recitative. It's uh, very well done, very interesting, stands out from pretty much all the other songs for that reason. Uh, acoustic rhythm builds in to fill out, and it's um, you know just beautiful with all the melodies and the hooks that work into this song. Devil Don't Go There. And you know I will mention real quick, talking about how Whiskey Colored Crayon might not be popular again, but I think that middle of it, I love this song. I think it would have made for a great penultimate track. Finishing up with Devil Don't Go There, your 13th track. Uh, Greater Pigeated Riff is the foundation for this atm atmospheric build. Nice bit of bluegrass that's influencing this song. It's uh, I just like the mellow feel. But, um, you know, it does lead into your album close, or Whiskey Colored Crayon. Another sentimental song. I think that that's the one thing that a lot of people will enjoy about it. It's probably the reason that they will disagree with me wanting to leave it off the vinyl version of the song. But I will say it is a quality track. It's got a nice story at its core and and, and a nice uh, musical arrangement as well. But I, I think that this thing would have been a vinyl please for sure with the absence of a couple songs and just a more cohesive run in that ideal runtime. But with all that said, I'd say definitely give this thing a listen. 7.3 out of 10. And uh, check it out. Hope you find this review helpful. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll be coming at you with more reviews. Like, share, subscribe, and do all those things. And please check out Classic Wax, the new morning show that debuts Monday morning. That'll be at 7 Pacific Standard Time, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope to see you all there. In the meantime, take care. We'll see you next time on The Beat Sessions.